Hey there folks, Rel here. Today I thought we'd share a fun infiltrator loadout dedicated to fast-paced, close-range gameplay with offensive use of cloak. Now this is a loadout that I like to call Brigandine, and in the background you're going to see just VS gameplay only, but you can definitely do it with either NC or TR. The setup is centered primarily around manipulating your nano armor cloak to reposition you after a quick takedown and receive very minimal damage as you escape. Nano armor cloaking doesn't last as long as other cloaks, but it also provides small arms damage mitigation at the same time. Make sure it's at max rank though, because that's when you get the 35% damage mitigation over the standard 25 on top of the increase to recharge speed. To complement our short cloaking time, we're also going to be running advanced shield capacitor at max rank with med kits in the utility slot. This allows us to quickly regain effective health, which in conjunction with nano armor cloaking, allows us to survive situations we probably shouldn't be able to. For weapons, we're going to be using the Generation 1 SMGs for each faction. That's the Air Donnie for the VS, the Armistice for the TR, and the Cyclone for the NC. And the attachments are going to be soft point, extended magazines, and a 1x reflex with no barrel attachment. Now you could potentially go with a suppressor depending on the base you're fighting at, but I think that there is more value in quicker takedowns through the higher projectile velocity and better damage profile of not running a suppressor. This build is less about being sneaky and more about being bold and causing havoc. Secondary weapons are honestly whatever you feel comfortable with, but I tend to run the underboss for accurate stopping power at close range, and if you want to supplement your long range killing potential, then you can go with the Black Hand or even the Commissioner, as they are both good options as well. For grenades, we're going to be running EMP, as it's one of the most useful grenades in the game, and there are very few reasons not to have it equipped. Implant is going to be rank 1 safe fall, since we're focusing more on movement, but regeneration, EOD HUD, sensor shield, all of which are good options. And for the tool slot, we are going to be sticking with the standard recon darts. That way, we can be a little bit more aggressive and push into an area, instead of getting tethered to our motion spotter. Either is a good option though, depending on the fight and how you want to play. Before we move into strategy, it's worth noting that this is not a loadout for inexperienced players, because not only is it expensive certification wise, but it's also difficult to do well with. If you were running a standard hunter cloak, you could probably play a little bit more conservatively and have an easier time all around, but easy doesn't equal fun in my book, so this is what we're going to be doing. As a side note for the PS4 players, I can't recommend nano armor cloaking at any point, because you literally can't move quickly enough to make it useful at least not with a controller. That said, the main strategy here is to drop a single enemy in a very short amount of time, and that's why we're using the Generation 1 SMGs. So you go for headshots at a range that makes sense, then you avoid or mitigate incoming fire by cloaking. And this sounds a little bit generic, but you gain a few unique advantages through using nano armor cloaking. If you at any point screw up an engagement, meaning that you're either missing shots or the heavy activates their shield, or someone else walks into the room, you can immediately peel off of your target and then have a good chance of escaping, thanks to the damage mitigation and med kits. Now on top of that, nano armor cloaking either shimmers less or doesn't shimmer at all when you get shot, so tracking you with multiple rounds is much more difficult to do, especially at longer ranges. If you get the jump on targets, you ambush, you disengage, you repeat, and be sure to focus on non-heavies first, as they go down more quickly, and the aim is to limit your exposure time. If you find yourself face to face with an enemy though, as long as they're not a heavy assault or a recognizably skillful player, you can usually just cloak and zigzag back and forth until they run out of ammo in their magazine. Then you can turn around and drop them. If you get taken down below your shield bar, you want to be sure to decloak and use a medkit and then you recloak again. But if you cloak mid stick, you can actually waste a medkit and not get any heal in the process. So you do want to make sure that you actually get your health back before you cloak again. Even so, this is a really quick process and being able to leave cloak, fill your health, drop back into cloak means that you get about 770-ish effective health in less than a second. Even though we're focusing on running and gunning, you can and still should use nano armor cloaking for sitting and waiting, and just not as much. You can still round a corner, hide, then open on the person who is pursuing you. It's a completely viable strategy, it just doesn't last quite as long. The last tactic here is to pulse your cloak, and by pulse I mean to turn on and turn off. Your max rank cloak can stay active for 8 seconds and it recharges in 11 seconds, meaning that for every second you use your cloak, you'll have to let it recharge for around a second and a half, a little bit less, 
And that's a pretty good trade-off, especially when you're moving through open fields. Plus, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, it makes you feel like a nightcrawler when you're constantly appearing and disappearing. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. And if you use a Nano Armor Cloak loadout, I'd like to hear how you make use of it in the comment section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.